Gene Arthur's journey through Hollywood was unlike any other. With a career that spanned over three decades, she delivered performances that have since become benchmarks of the golden age of cinema. Yet, for someone so visible on the silver screen, Arthur was a figure of profound privacy, her off-screen life a stark contrast to the characters she so vivaciously brought to life. But who was Jean Arthur truly? Beyond the laughter and the acclaim, beyond the roles that made her a household name, there lay a woman of complexity, a soul who sought solace away from the cacophony of fame. Arthur's reluctance to embrace her celebrity status, her battles with anxiety, and her eventual retreat from Hollywood form a narrative as compelling as any of her films. This video seeks to peel back the layers of Jean Arthur's quiet radiance to explore the dichotomy of a woman who was both a beacon of talent on screen and an enigma off it. From her early days in silent films to her unforgettable roles in classics directed by the likes of Frank Capra and George Stevens, we delve into the life of a woman who, despite her best efforts to remain out of the limelight, left an indelible mark on the industry and on the hearts of those who watched her. The Rise of Jean Arthur Jean Arthur's journey to becoming a beloved icon of Hollywood's golden age is a tale of resilience, talent, and an unmistakable voice that captivated audiences worldwide. Born Gladys Georgiana Green in 1900 in Plattsburgh, New York, Arthur's early life was marked by frequent moves, reflecting a restless spirit that would later define her career. Her entry into the world of acting was not a straightforward path. It was paved with the kind of determination and grit that characterized many of Hollywood's self-made stars. Arthur's foray into acting began in the early 1920s, a time when the film industry was undergoing significant transformations. The silent era was in full swing and Hollywood was a burgeoning hub of creativity and innovation. Arthur's initial roles were small, often uncredited parts in silent films, where her distinctive presence began to draw attention. Despite the limitations of these early roles, Arthur's persistence paid off, leading to more substantial parts that showcased her range and depth as an actress. The transition from silent films to talkies in the late 1920s and early 1930s was a tumultuous period for many actors, whose careers were abruptly ended by the new demand for a different kind of on-screen presence. However, for Arthur, the advent of sound cinema provided an opportunity to leverage her most unique asset, her voice. Described as a mix of a squeak and a melodious lilt, Arthur's voice became her signature, setting her apart from her contemporaries and endearing her to audiences and critics alike. Arthur's breakthrough came with her role in The Whole Town's Talking, 1935, a performance that showcased her comedic timing and charm. However, it was her collaboration with director Frank Capra that catapulted her to stardom. Films like Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, 1936, and Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, 1939, not only solidified her status as a leading lady, but also highlighted her ability to bring depth and authenticity to her characters, traits that would define her career. Despite her success, Arthur's relationship with fame was complex. Known for her reclusive nature and discomfort with the Hollywood publicity machine, Arthur's off-screen life was shrouded in mystery, a stark contrast to the vivacious and approachable characters she portrayed. The Craft of Comedy Jean Arthur's ascent to the zenith of Hollywood stardom was marked by her unparalleled mastery of the screwball comedy genre, a style of film that became immensely popular during the 1930s and 1940s. This genre, known for its fast-paced dialogue, complex plots, and blend of slapstick with a sophisticated wit, found its perfect muse in Arthur. Her performances in Mr. Deeds Goes to Town and The Lady Eve are emblematic of her ability to navigate the intricate dynamics of screwball comedy, showcasing her talent for combining wit, charm, and a palpable sense of vulnerability. Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, 1936, directed by Frank Capra, was a pivotal film in Arthur's career. Cast opposite Gary Cooper, Arthur played the role of Babe Bennett, a sharp-witted reporter who falls for Longfellow deeds, Cooper, a simple man who inherits a vast fortune. Arthur's portrayal of Bennett was a master class in the screwball heroine archetype, intelligent, independent, and morally complex. 
Her on-screen chemistry with Cooper was electric, and her performance earned critical acclaim, solidifying her status as one of the era's leading ladies in comedy. However, it was perhaps her role in The Lady Eve, 1941, directed by Preston Sturgis, that fully showcased Arthur's comedic genius. Though Barbara Stanwyck played the lead in The Lady Eve, Arthur's roles in similar screwball comedies of the era, such as The More the Merrier, 1943, demonstrated her adeptness at this genre. Her ability to deliver rapid-fire dialogue with precision, coupled with her comedic timing and the inherent warmth she brought to her characters, made her performances stand out. Arthur's characters often challenged societal norms, embodying a modern woman spirit who was both assertive and feminine. Arthur's unique appeal in the screwball comedy genre lay in her ability to blend humor with heart. Her characters were not mere caricatures, they were imbued with a depth and complexity that resonated with audiences. Arthur herself brought a sense of authenticity to these roles, drawing on her personal experiences and inner resilience. Off screen, Arthur was known for her shyness and aversion to the Hollywood limelight, traits that contrasted sharply with the confident women she portrayed on screen. This juxtaposition between her private self and her public persona added layers to her performances, making her characters all the more compelling. Arthur's contribution to the screwball comedy genre extended beyond her individual performances. She helped define the archetype of the screwball heroine, a woman who was equal parts intellect, humor, and heart. This archetype would influence countless films and performances in the genre, leaving a legacy that endures in cinematic history. Gene Arthur's mastery of screwball comedy, highlighted in films like Mr. Deeds Goes to Town and through her body of work in the genre, showcases her as one of the definitive leading ladies of her era. Her ability to convey wit, charm, and vulnerability on screen not only endeared her to audiences, but also cemented her place in Hollywood's golden age as a symbol of comedic and dramatic excellence. Arthur and Capra, a cinematic partnership. The collaboration between Gene Arthur and Frank Capra is one of Hollywood's most celebrated director-actor partnerships, emblematic of a period when cinema was as much about entertainment as it was about conveying poignant social messages. This partnership flourished during the 1930s, a time of significant social and economic upheaval in the United States. Capra, with his deeply ingrained belief in the goodness of the common man and his critique of unchecked power, found in Arthur not just a talented actress, but a conduit for his themes of integrity, resilience, and social justice. Their collaboration produced several films, but none more significant than Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, 1939, a film that has come to define American ideals of democracy and individual agency, Arthur played Clarissa Saunders, a savvy and cynical secretary who helps the film's protagonist, Jefferson Smith, played by James Stewart, navigate the complexities of American politics. Arthur's performance, marked by a blend of skepticism and eventual inspiration, perfectly complemented Capra's vision of an America where ordinary individuals can make a difference. The success of Mr. Smith Goes to Washington was due in no small part to the synergy between Capra's direction and Arthur's performance. Capra's socially conscious storytelling, which often tackled themes of corruption, media manipulation, and the loss of innocence, found its ideal expression in Arthur's characters, who often embodied a blend of idealism and pragmatism. This dynamic allowed Capra's films to resonate on a deeply emotional level, with Arthur serving as the relatable, human element in his grand narratives. Arthur's collaboration with Capra was not limited to Mr. Smith Goes to Washington. Their partnership also produced Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, 1936, and You Can't Take It With You, 1938, films that similarly explored themes of simplicity, honesty, and the value of community. In each of these films, Arthur's performances were critical to grounding Capra's ideals in relatable human terms. Her ability to convey complex emotions with subtlety and depth provided the perfect foil to Capra's larger-than-life characters and situations. Beyond her work with Capra, Arthur's career was also marked by her collaboration with another legendary director, John Ford, in The Whole Town's Talking, 1935. 
While her partnership with Ford was not as extensive as with Capra, it further showcased her versatility as an actress and her ability to adapt to different directorial styles. Ford, known for his portrayal of American myths and landscapes, utilized Arthur's talent to explore themes of identity and redemption, adding another layer to her already diverse career. The Reluctant Star Gene Arthur's luminous presence on the silver screen belied a deeply private nature, a paradox that defined her career and personal life. Despite her undeniable talent and the acclaim that came with it, Arthur was known for her shyness and aversion to the Hollywood limelight, a reluctance that stood in stark contrast to the bold, spirited characters she portrayed. This chapter delves into the complexities of Arthur's stardom, exploring how her reluctance to embrace fame contrasted sharply with her on-screen persona and professional success. Arthur's preference for privacy over public accolades was well known within the industry. Unlike many of her contemporaries, she eschewed the typical trappings of Hollywood fame, rarely appearing at public events or participating in the studio's publicity efforts beyond what was contractually required. Interviews with Arthur were scarce, and she was known to be uncomfortable with the fanfare and attention that came with her profession. This reticence extended to her personal life, which she guarded fiercely, leading to much speculation and mystery surrounding the actress. Despite her aversion to the spotlight, Arthur's talent could not be contained. On screen, she exuded a natural warmth and charisma, endearing her to audiences and making her one of the most beloved actresses of her time. Her ability to convey strength, vulnerability, and humor often simultaneously made her performances compelling and relatable. Arthur's work with directors like Frank Capra highlighted her unique appeal, showcasing her as the quintessential everywoman who embodied American ideals of integrity and resilience. The contrast between Arthur's public and private selves raises questions about the nature of stardom and the expectations placed on public figures. Arthur's career coincided with the golden age of Hollywood, a time when stars were expected to maintain a certain image and availability to their fans. Her reluctance to participate in this aspect of her profession was seen as unconventional, even problematic, by studio executives who relied on star power to promote their films. Yet, Arthur's insistence on maintaining her privacy can also be viewed as a form of resistance against the commodification of celebrity and an assertion of her autonomy. Arthur's shyness and preference for privacy did not diminish her professional dedication. Colleagues and directors often spoke of her commitment to her craft, her meticulous preparation for roles, and her ability to transform once the cameras were rolling. This professionalism, coupled with her natural talent, ensured that Arthur's career thrived despite her aversion to the spotlight. Pioneering Feminine Archetypes in an era when women on screen were often relegated to secondary or stereotypical roles, Arthur's characters stood out for their strength, intelligence, and independence. Her portrayal of such roles contributed to evolving representations of women in cinema, offering audiences a glimpse of a more nuanced and empowered female identity. Arthur's characters were often women ahead of their time, navigating professional and personal challenges with a blend of resilience and grace. In Mr. Deeds Goes to Town, she plays a savvy reporter who, despite her initial cynicism, reveals a deep capacity for empathy and integrity. Similarly, in Mr. Smith Goes to Washington, Arthur portrays a seasoned political aide who becomes an invaluable ally to James Stewart's idealistic senator, showcasing her character's intelligence and political acumen. These roles, among others, positioned Arthur as an actress capable of conveying complex female experiences, breaking away from the damsel-in-distress archetype prevalent in many films of the era. Arthur's on-screen personas resonated with the emerging sensibilities of a society on the cusp of significant social change. The 1930s and 1940s were decades marked by economic turmoil, war, and the beginning of shifts in gender dynamics. Women were entering the workforce in unprecedented numbers, and their roles within the family and society at large were beginning to evolve. Arthur's characters reflected this shift, embodying the aspirations and challenges of a generation of women seeking greater autonomy and recognition. Moreover, Arthur's collaboration with directors like Frank Capra further amplified her impact on the portrayal of women in cinema. 
Capra's films, known for their social commentary and exploration of American ideals, provided Arthur with a platform to showcase her range as an actress and to bring to life characters that were both relatable and inspirational. Her performances in Capra's films not only entertained, but also provoked thought about the role of women in society, their capacity for leadership, and their right to pursue personal and professional fulfillment. Jean Arthur's contribution to cinema extends beyond her individual performances to include her influence on the portrayal of women on screen. By taking on roles that challenge traditional gender roles, Arthur paved the way for future generations of actresses. Her legacy is evident in the increasingly complex and diverse representations of women in film, a testament to her enduring impact on the industry. Arthur's reluctance to embrace the trappings of fame, coupled with her commitment to portraying strong, intelligent women, underscores the duality of her legacy. Off screen, she was a private individual who shied away from the spotlight, yet on screen, she represented a progressive vision of womanhood. This duality enriches Arthur's legacy, making her not just a celebrated actress of Hollywood's golden age, but also a pioneering figure in the evolution of women's representation in cinema. The Transition to Stage and Television Jean Arthur's transition from the silver screen to the stage and television marked a significant shift in her career, reflecting her desire to explore different facets of acting and to engage with new audiences. This chapter delves into the later part of Arthur's career, highlighting her notable stage performances and her role in the television series The Jean Arthur Show, underscoring her continued impact on the performing arts. After achieving considerable success in Hollywood, Arthur's career took a turn as she began to seek opportunities beyond film. Her move towards stage and television was driven by a combination of factors, including her well-documented discomfort with the Hollywood system and her desire for more challenging and diverse roles. Arthur's foray into theater was not just a departure from film, but a return to her roots. Before her Hollywood fame, she had experience in New York's theater scene, which had initially honed her acting skills. One of Arthur's most significant stage roles came in 1950, when she starred in the Broadway production of Peter Pan as Peter. Her performance was lauded for its energy and whimsy, capturing the eternal youthfulness of the character and showcasing Arthur's versatility as an actress. This role, among others, demonstrated Arthur's ability to captivate live audiences, just as she had film audiences, with her unique charm and talent. Arthur's transition to television was highlighted by The Gene Arthur Show in 1966, where she played a lawyer. The show was an attempt to capitalize on Arthur's enduring appeal, offering her a platform to reach a new generation of viewers. Despite the show's short run, it was a testament to Arthur's willingness to embrace new challenges and to adapt to the changing dynamics of the entertainment industry. Arthur's work in stage and television during the latter part of her career is indicative of her broader impact on the performing arts. She brought the same depth and nuance to her stage and television roles as she did to her film characters, challenging traditional gender roles and paving the way for future generations of actresses. Her characters often embodied strength, intelligence, and independence, contributing to evolving representations of women in cinema and beyond. Moreover, Arthur's transition highlights the fluidity between different mediums of acting, underscoring the idea that talent transcends the platform. Her ability to move between film, stage, and television with ease and success is a testament to her skill as an actress and her dedication to her craft. In examining the later part of Jean Arthur's career, we see a performer who was not content to rest on her laurels, but was driven by a passion for acting and a desire to explore the full range of her abilities. Her contributions to stage and television are an essential part of her legacy, showcasing her versatility and her continued relevance in the world of performing arts. The Legacy of a Reluctant Star Reflecting on Jean Arthur's enduring legacy in Hollywood requires an appreciation of her unique position within the pantheon of Golden Age cinema. Arthur's contributions to the film industry during her active years were profound, not only in terms of the memorable characters she brought to life, but also in how she navigated her career with a rare blend of integrity and talent. 
This chapter focuses on Arthur's impact on the film industry, her influence on contemporary actresses, and her lasting symbol as an exemplar of grace and professionalism in an industry often criticized for its excesses. Jean Arthur's legacy in Hollywood is anchored in her performances, which often broke the mold of traditional female roles. Her characters were strong, intelligent, and independent, embodying a modern woman who could stand on equal footing with her male counterparts. This was a significant departure from the more conventional portrayals of women in cinema at the time, making Arthur a forerunner in the evolution of female characters in Hollywood. Films like Mr. Smith Goes to Washington and The More the Merrier not only showcased her talent, but also her ability to portray women of substance and complexity. Arthur's influence extends beyond the roles she played. Her approach to her career and her life in Hollywood set her apart. Known for her aversion to the limelight and her dedication to her craft, Arthur chose roles that resonated with her personally and professionally, rather than those that would merely elevate her star status. This principled approach to acting, coupled with her natural talent, made her a role model for actresses of her time and for generations to come.